Even if you are the most privacy-minded individuals watching this channel, you probably have a social media account somewhere on the internet. Privacy is very important to us. If you are logged into YouTube, well, I'm sorry to break it to you, that could be considered social media. And if you do not, chances are you have colleagues, friends and family members who most definitely do have social media accounts. Whether that is just the account you use to log into YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok to watch little short videos, or the ones that you use to talk to family members or online friends like Facebook and Twitter, which I refuse to call X. Or maybe you had to make a LinkedIn profile to network for your job. Social media is kind of a part of our lives now, both professionally and personally. I am everywhere. So it's crucial to understand how to protect these types of accounts from invasions of privacy and breaches to security. So these are my seven best pro tips to secure your social media accounts. Now, if you have already taken these steps, send this video to your friends or family. Chances are you will save somebody the hassle of having to Google all these tips and you could potentially save someone from getting hacked. So it's a win-win. Now this video is sponsored by Delete Me, so make sure to stick around for a really Really great discount code and to find out how you can scrub your data from the internet the easy way. Now we are still waiting for pass keys to be adopted by most sites. So in the meantime, we are stuck with the old adage of password management. Whenever you create passwords for social media, a common problem I see is people will reuse the same password or something very similar across all the common sites. For example, you could use a password like cat6755, which sounds like a good one, but it's it's really not. So you could use that one on Facebook and then go over to Twitter and use cat6756. Now, not only is that way too similar to the first password, but it's also way too short and way too easy to guess. If someone was to figure out your password for Facebook, the first one, they could easily try it or just change a letter or a number over on Twitter and be able to break in. It would not take long for somebody to hack into your account. Now, recently, one of my family members did have their Facebook account hacked. And and while they did change their password, they also told me, well, there's just too many to memorize, so I'll just change it back next week. Don't do that. <laughs> if you did get hacked, chances are somebody already knows that old password, so why would you keep using it? Why would you go back to that old password? There's nothing stopping an attacker from hitting up your Facebook account again in a couple of weeks just to see if they still have access. Now, I suggest using a password manager to secure your passwords. That way, you don't have to memorize any of them except for the one that you use to access your password manager. So you could think of it kind of like a bank vault with a whole bunch of passwords scattered about inside the bank vault. You can't get into that bank vault without getting through the security system of the bank and then using the key to unlock that giant thick vault door. I have a few videos on my channel all about password managers and which ones I really recommend. So we just compared password managers to bank vaults. 2FA can be compared to an ATM machine. The ATM machine needs two things to give you access to your money, right? Your bank card, you need to have your card, and you have to have a PIN. Those are two factors of authentication. Now online, this takes a similar form. Whenever you log in, you input your username or your email address and a password. And then the next page asks you to input a six digit code that is sent to your phone or generated in an app, or it authenticates you with a piece of hardware that you might have in hand. Now, the most common of these is whenever a site sends you a text message with a code and it tells you to enter that code into the website. That means the site is requiring you to have your password, but also that second thing, whether that's the hardware key or your phone with a special code that your phone tells you to enter into a site. Now, some sites automatically set this up when you sign up. Other sites will have this option in the settings under their security and logging in section, and you have to enable it yourself. Now, all of today's social media accounts allow you to add 2FA in one form or another. If you would find a walkthrough of each site's setups processes useful, then let me know down in the comments below. And if you are finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean a whole lot to me. Subscribing is a very simple way and a free way of showing me which videos you find helpful and valuable. And it also tells me which direction I should take my channel in. All right, so those two steps set you up with better login security, but how about security after 
after you log in. Well, this is account access. So first we are going to look at additional account security options. Anything that has access to your account can be disabled under your security options. As an example, we're gonna log into Twitter and look at Twitter's settings or X. On Twitter, go to settings, then click security and account access, then choose security. Now this is where you can choose what type of 2FA you would prefer to use. While Twitter's announcement many moons ago about removing text message 2FA support got a lot of folks totally confused and thinking that they had to pay for blue in order to get 2FA, that's not actually the case. The truth is text message 2FA is the least secure option. So you are actually better off choosing either the authentication app option or the security key option or both. You can have one as a backup if you wanted to. Once set up, you can also write down your backup codes and store those somewhere safe. I actually just did a video about backup codes, so watch that if you are curious about learning more about why you need those and why you should download them and print them out and write them and put them in a safe somewhere where you can access them. When it comes to social media accounts, the security settings page is where you will also find options like protecting your account from password reset attacks by requiring you to input your email or phone number in order to reset a password. A crucial security step is auditing which apps are going to have access to your account. Now on Twitter, this is found under security and account access, and then you choose apps and sessions. Now, if you use Twitter to sign into another account, or if you authorized an app to have access to your Twitter data, then those will appear here. Revoke any of those that you don't need or any that you don't recognize. Sessions also has to do with other devices that are currently logged into your account. If you see one that you don't recognize or need logged in, then click on the device and then choose log out the device shown. We often totally forget about old devices after they are donated or sold or gifted. Not only should you be resetting those devices to factory settings, but you should also be revoking their access under your social media accounts. Now click into connected accounts and the same applies. Remove any that you don't recognize and then you can move on. This next tip is a bit of a Twitter specific side note. We have this option that says delegate. This is a feature that allows multiple people to manage a Twitter account, like for a business, for example. If there are any accounts delegated to you or ones that you have delegated your account to, you can remove them under those two settings. You can also disable this entirely if this is something that you will never use. Now, today's episode is sponsored by Delete Me, and this is actually a step that you can take online to protect your data because you can protect all of this data on social media all day long, but if any of those social media accounts get scraped, your data could end up on a data broker website. And if your data is already online, it's very easy for anybody to find it. So data broker websites make that data really easy to search and they make it publicly available. So that could be data like your full name, your home address, your phone number, your email address, your spouse's name, your kid's names, where you work, your income level, all sorts of data can be found on these data brokers. And yes, you can totally go through each and every one of those sites and find your data and request that they remove it. But that can take days every single month to do because there are hundreds of data brokers out there. So I signed up for Delete Me many, many years ago as a paid customer. They take the hassle and the stress off of my shoulders. It was like a weight was lifted. Delete Me sends all of the opt-outs for me. So I don't have to spend time searching all these data broker websites and sending all those opt-out requests manually myself. Even though several of my friends who worked in cybersecurity recommended Delete Me to myself when I first signed up for it and still do, I realized that you might be suspect about trusting a company like this one to do work for you. Delete Me takes a very, very strong approach to data security. They have regulatory compliance. They have internal and external auditing. They have multi-factor authentication that you can turn on for your account when you log in. They also have security awareness training for their own employees. And when it comes to threat monitoring, Delete Me also monitors their network traffic 24 seven for anomalies. They also encrypt personal information, both in transit and at rest. And if you are skeptical, you can always reach out directly to Delete Me if you have your own security questions. So if you are ready to take control over your own data online, especially like your phone number and your kids' names, like that's pretty concerning. You can check out joindeleteme.com slash Morse code. You can get 20% off any of their consumer plans with my coupon code. It's S-N-U-B-S or snubs, which will automatically apply at checkout at that link. That's joindeleteme.com 
delitebee.com slash morse code for 20% off with the coupon code snubs. And thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. Now, social media apps often have access to permissions like your location, even when you are not even using the app. For apps like Twitter and Facebook, this location data lets them serve up localized ads as well as recommended nearby content. But you do have the option to disable those settings. These settings, again, would be found under your general account settings and then under security and privacy. But here's a pro tip. Pull out your phone and hold down on your social media app from your home screen. I will use Facebook for this example. You click on the info icon, the little I, and then click on permissions. If location is enabled, you can revoke that access right here. This can also be accessed through the app under the gear icon, and then you can either go to your privacy checkup and look for your data on Facebook, or you can scroll down to device permissions and disable location. This is also the perfect place to look at all those other permissions and revoke any unnecessary ones. Now let's delete our older accounts. Let me tell you a little bit of a story here. I have a family member, I won't name names, who constantly forgets her password and instead of resetting it, she creates a new Facebook profile and she adds everybody again as a friend. <laughs> Yeah, even though that is less convenient for me, she finds it easier to do this than resetting her passwords all the time. But the problem with this is her old Facebook accounts end up still being active because she never deletes them, even though she can't access them. So if those old accounts ever got hacked, somebody could get access to any of her private posts from those old accounts or photos. They could message friends pretending to be her or worse. Because of this, I often help family delete old accounts. So all her old accounts don't exist anymore and I go through their settings whenever I visit them. A vulnerable social media account can become an attack vector for anybody who you have friended through that account. There's a great website online. It's called justdelete.me, although I don't think it's been updated in a long time, but they have this well-rounded resource to figure out how to delete your old accounts. You can read through each and every website's deletion policy and find really quick information via this site. So I think this is a lot faster than digging into your settings to hopefully find a delete my account option, which may or may not exist. I mean, some of these websites make you email somebody and ask to delete your account. They don't trust you to do it yourself or they just don't want you to ever delete your accounts because the more users they have is the more money in their pockets. Now, after removing permissions, changing passwords and deleting old accounts, you have done a lot to secure your social media, but there is one crucial step that can stop attacks and that is making your accounts private. It. I realize that all of my accounts are public, so you might watch this and be like, but Snubs, all your accounts are public. That's because that's my job, but most folks don't need a public social media account. Social media does have an option to allow all of your posts to be private for a group of friends that you have picked, so they won't be displayed for the entire world to see. You may think that nobody is interested in your post, but even things such as photos of your kids, a picture of your hometown, a mention about going on vacation, the first day of your kid's school when they hold up those little signs that say the teacher's name and where they're going to school. Like that's information that you probably don't want the entire internet to know. So you should not be posting that on a public account. This is the kind of information that could allow somebody to stalk you. If you end up posting when you go on vacation, they could rob your home. A post about your dog or your mom could be the answer to a password reset security question. Like the ones that you see when you log into your bank that say, what is your mom's maiden name? Or what is is your dog's name or what high school did you go to? And just in case you're wondering, all of mine are generated through a password manager. So I don't even know the answer to my own security questions. <laughs> all of these seem kind of innocuous at first, but an attacker can put pieces together and create a dossier of sorts full of your data, just from public posts on social media. You can make your entire account private and on some platforms like Facebook and TikTok, you can make specific videos or specific posts private, but still have a public facing account if you need that for work. If your account has been public and you want to go in and make everything private, you can do that as well. On Twitter, when you switch from public to private, that means that your entire account and all of your old tweets will all of a sudden be private, for example, but anybody that's currently following you can still see all of those private posts. Unfortunately though, many of these social media giants just don't have a way to easily delete all of your old posts all at once, as opposed to changing your account to just private all together 
together. There are third party apps that you can pay for that will do that for you, but they do not give us an easy way to just cleanse our social media and start fresh if you wanna continue using a public account. On Facebook, you can go to settings and privacy, settings, privacy, then look for your activity section. You can limit past posts to friends only immediately, and you can limit your future posts to friends only. I think it would be really cool if Twitter also had like a delete all of your previous posts option for people who have been on there since like 2008, but they don't. It's also a great idea to check out the rest of the settings on this page to make sure that strangers cannot access you or tag you in photos without your consent. Now, even if you do have your social media account set to private, there is nothing stopping one of your friends, I should say friends, from screenshotting your post or taking a picture of a DM or a direct message that you might've sent them. The only thing stopping people who have access to those posts from sharing your posts without your consent is trust and respect. Do not wait until somebody breaks that trust and respect to stop posting things online that you would not normally say or do in person. A lot of people hide behind a monitor and keyboard and say cruel, mean, hurtful things online, and they think that there's no consequences for these kind of actions. But people lose jobs because their posts will get screenshotted and sent to their bosses. They will get in trouble with the law if they post a picture of themselves doing something unlawful, and then they get canceled. That's a problem as well. So treat people with respect. Don't give them a reason to screenshot your private posts and be careful who you friend on a private social media account. People might be nice to your face, but fake as heck in the real world. Ask me how I know. Actually don't, I'm not all about that gossip life. So what best practices would you recommend to lock down and secure your social media accounts? Social media is all about being social and communicating online, but it is hard to balance that if you also care about being private and being safe. Comment your tips down below. I'm sure that these were pretty generic and broad, but you probably have some really, really interesting tips as well. So put those down below, subscribe for more like this. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.